what do you do when you've had your first child and you're not feeling sexy? Well, stay tuned and I'm gonna be answering that question from one of my viewers. Already, my name's Laura, I'm an empowerment coach, I'm an intuit and I have been working one-to-one -one with people as well as groups to help them to turn trauma and their life's problems into something that's better. I had an email sent in from one of my viewers who's been having a bit of a year of it. Um, he's had his first child uh, with his partner and we're going to call him Brian. So Brian wrote in to ask a few questions because he was feeling as if he'd lost his entire identity to being a dad, to being a partner, to being a husband, and that he'd kind of lost his mojo a little bit and he didn't really know how to get that back. And I am the kind of go-to, I think, for everybody in my life that's got a problem to come to and ask for some help. And I'm here for anybody. So if you've got any questions that you'd like answering and you want to do a bit of a Dear Deidre slot with me, uh, I will change your name, but send in your problem to hello at lawofattraction.co.uk. I'll put that on the screen somewhere and I'll do my best to give you my humble advice from somebody who has fucked their life up many times and has managed to get themselves out of it and that's what that's the point where I come from so what do you do what do you do when you're not feeling sexy when you feel like you've lost your mojo and your partner's not reciprocating in the way that you want well first things first as I say many times is you must communicate this with your partner um, when Brian messaged me about this issue I was like have you have you spoken have you spoken to Sue and he hadn't spoken to Sue so Brian, the first thing we said was, okay, we're gonna sit down, not me, I'm not gonna be there, but he needs to sit down with Sue and have a proper conversation with her about something. And he got back to me and unfortunately he'd kind of gone, <laughs> gone about it jovially. And this is something that's a problem. When we deal with big things like, I don't feel sexy, there's a problem in a relationship, we can often come at it kind of flippantly, but sometimes that comes across as passively aggressive. He said that he'd said to her, you know, that he could count on one hand how many times that they'd had sex over the last sort of year. And unfortunately, that actually comes across kind of passive aggressive. It's like, well, what am I supposed to do with that information? When Sue heard that, what is she supposed to do with that information? You know, is she supposed to have sex with you right now? She also doesn't understand the gravity of the situation. She doesn't understand that your, well, Brian wasn't feeling very good. She's not understanding that Brian feels bad about himself, that he's lost some of his own sexual energy and identity as a man and as an individual. Now, she understood that. She may have reciprocated differently. Instead, it was flippantly dealt with because it was flippantly given. And so what Sue did was kind of presume it as just being, you know, her horny husband who's always looking after sex. And I presume the reason why they're probably not having sex is that one, they've lost a bit of connection because they've had their first child. That's very, that's very clear that that's going to happen. You know, if you're exhausted and looking after a child as a woman, the last thing you're going to want to do is have sex. And for a man, there is difficulties with this because there is a lot of kind of heavy societal programming that women feel pressurized to have sex even when they don't want to, um, that men are kind of always kind of sex hungry and they always want sex. And so there's a lot of this kind of, you know, this kind of pressure that's added to the conversation that actually isn't coming from that perspective. So when you deal with it flippantly, when Brian kind of dealt with it flippantly, the only way that Sue could have taken it would have been in a flippant fashion. And so he obviously didn't get the response he wanted. And then he's going to feel kind of, you know, kind of thrown to the wayside, kind of non-acknowledged with um, the difficulties that he's having. And actually a little bit kind of um, uncared for, I suppose. Now, it's not because it's not important to Sue. The problem was that the way he originally said it made it seem as if it wasn't important and made it seem as if it was just about sex, which it isn't. Sex isn't just about the physical act in a relationship. Sex is something that brings you two together and builds that intimacy that will keep your relationship strong. It's the one thing that you're not doing with everybody else or in a monogamous relationship, uh, which this one with Brian is, is the one thing that you're not doing over there with everybody else. You can find companionship, you can find friendship, you can find joy and laughter and, and compassion and non-sexual intimacy with all of your friends. But if sex is the one thing that you're doing with your partner, fiance, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and that's the one thing that's missing, 
that's the one thing that really creates that bond between you two. So how do we get it back? Well, um, first of all, you must communicate with your partner openly and honestly. And I'm looking down just to make sure that I, I know what I'm saying. Um, you know, when you're kind of communicating these issues, you do need to be very open, very honest. You need to make sure that you and your partner have actually got the time to deal with the problem at hand, that it isn't just this flippant thing that you're throwing across the breakfast table and being like, oh, hey, I've got this problem, but I'm gonna be flippant about it so it doesn't seem such a big deal, so I don't feel so uncomfortable, so you never really understand the true vastness of this issue that I'm experiencing, and then when you push me aside, I'm gonna be butthurt about it because I feel like you didn't hear me. They didn't hear you because you didn't speak. And so what's really important is you need to sit down and you need to communicate correctly. And that is one, making the time, okay? So this could be something that you ask your partner that you have something you want to talk about, that it's not something to worry about, but you wanna talk and you wanna be able to give them your full attention and you want them to give you their full attention and make time for it. And I think, you know, something that I said to Brian was he really, he needs to sit down and say something focused on himself, okay, for one, because often when we say things like, you haven't done this or you haven't been doing this, it comes across as an attack to our partner. When we sit down and talk about, I feel like this, I feel like that, this is impacting me like this, and we talk about those things, that stops your partner from going on the defense, okay? So that's really important. So what I suggested to Brian to say is something along the lines of that I'm not feeling very sexy at the moment. I feel like I have lost my mojo. I feel like I've lost my identity as a man and uh, and as a husband over the last year, you know, that I miss being intimate with you, that I am really worried that we haven't had this intimacy that we used to have. And I know that we have a child now and that's obviously going to impact things, but I am worried and I want to find that intimacy that makes us a couple and that puts our relationship special above everybody else's and all the other relationships in my life. I wanna find a way that we can be a couple together rather than just parents together. You know, and, and then I would suggest to ask, uh, ask Sue, ask her, ask your partner, whomever you're speaking to about these issues, ask them how they feel. And do they have any suggestions about what might help this situation? And you can start to open up the floor uh, from there. And I think that it's really important to ask your partner what they feel, what they think. Um, and that actually gives them an opening to be able to help you with your issue because the issue is yours. Okay, it might be a thing that we're doing or not doing together as it were, but the issue is yours. So when you, when you, when you take that and you ask your partner for help with something, for one, they'll be listening because you're asking your partner for help. For two, they'll actually want to be part of the solution because you've come to them for help. And three, by asking for help and being honest and open and vulnerable, vulnerability, very important, by being open and honest and vulnerable, your partner will actually understand how important this is for you. And I say all the time, communication is king in a relationship. You cannot, um, you know, get over that. You can't, you can't have a deep, intimate relationship with somebody and, you know, just kind of like divert from the open, honest communication. It doesn't work that way. So get brave, say what you feel, say what you think, do it in the way that I've said, this will stop you from agitating your partner and for making them feel like you're being passive aggressive or blaming them and see what they suggest. After you have asked them for that, for your help, you need to stop and you need to listen, okay? And if they aren't interested and they don't want to help you and they're not interested in aiding you or changing the situation, then you need to work on yourself as much as you can. But if it comes down to the point that you're having a relationship with somebody that doesn't wanna have a full intimate relationship with you, then you need to look at the drawing board again as to whether or not that relationship is the right one for you. And if it gets to that point, then you also need to be very open and honest with your partner actually how big a problem this is. Because it isn't fair to your partner to discuss something, not find a resolution, and then through not finding a resolution, just go, okay, you didn't give me what I wanted, I'm done. 
you have a responsibility to your partner, particularly if there's a child in involved, to do your best, to try your best, and to try every eventuality before you give up. There are so many people that just leave relationships because they think that it isn't right. The, the relationships are fucking difficult, guys, okay? They are difficult, they take work. The reason why your granny and granddad stayed together for 80 years is because they worked on it, not because they had a perfect relationship. They had disagreements, they had arguments, they have different opinions and views on things. They had troubles and problems and struggles and strifes. And the reason why they stayed together is because they committed to each other and they got up and they continued to fight for the relationship. Now, if your relationship is right and you, it's right enough for you to have had a child with that person, then you need to work on it as much as you can. And it could be that you need to get mediation, it could be that you need to go to therapy or counseling or you know whatever. Um, but I think try all of those things and if it's still not working at the end of that, then it's time to go, okay, next, move on. But if you haven't done all of those things, then all you're gonna do is take the problems from your old relationship and bring them to your new relationship because you haven't actually worked out how to deal with the problem that you've got at hand. So I hope that helped. I hope that helped all of you um, that may be going through the same problem. If you have a problem and you want some advice, um, please send me an email. As I said, I'll change your name. I'll change your details enough so people don't know it's you. But I'm doing a bit of a Dear Deirdre. If you don't know what that is, it's an agony aunt column in, <laughs> in the UK. I think it was in the newspaper. Um, but if you want some help, get in touch and I'll do my best to help you. All right, guys, I love you all very much. Good luck with your issues, your problems and your life. I hope you have an amazing weekend, an amazing life wherever you've watched this whenever you see this my name is laura from laura of attraction i love you goodbye but it isn't this flipping thing that you're just kind of throwing over the breast bre the breast <laughs> the breast first the breakfast table